Today, we embark on a journey to explore the topic that's deeply ingrained in our history, yet often overlooked in today's society. The possibility of white individuals unlearning are to desist and discrimination towards black communities. From centuries of systemic oppression to the present day struggles faced by black communities, the issue of discrimination continues to haunt the American landscape. But what happens when we shine a light on the subconscious biases that shape our perceptions? In our quest for understanding, we hear from a white lady who bravely shares our insights into why many palm color people remain unaware of the art to desist within themselves. Through our experiences and reflections, we uncover the complexities of dismantling prejudices that have been passed down through generations. Before we begin, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Together, we can make a difference. Let's start the conversation. And I certainly don't think that black people should just expect racism because white people are going to stop being that way. There's plenty of people that are still going to be that way. But just because I'm white or we're white doesn't mean that we are. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. That's literally what that means. Look, my fellow rice cakes, I'm going to say something out loud that you would probably prefer I kept to myself, but we are terrible at self-examination because we are obsessed with being perceived as good. We are good people with good intentions who do good things, and we know that racism is bad, so we're offended by the mere insinuation that we could be capable of dehumanizing anybody. And that line of thinking right there is why we continue to take L's left and right, because you can't confront a problem if you don't acknowledge the problem exists. Listen, you are not evil and bad because you were born white, and no reasonable person is saying that you are. Are. What we're saying is that it is a problem if you don't acknowledge what it means to have been born white in a racist society. It is a problem if you're not willing to examine the privileges, I know we all hate that word, but the privileges, the benefits, and the means of insulation we inherit by virtue of being born white. And it's not that we can't experience other disadvantages, including some that we may share with black, indigenous, and other people of color. We can be discriminated against on the basis of our sexuality, our gender, our physical abilities, our economic status. There are plenty of reasons why a given white person might grow up in a shitty situation. But the color of our skin has never, ever, ever, ever been one of those problems. And if you can't say that out loud, then you're being racist. White folks, we have to discuss abuse ourselves of this notion that to be racist is to walk around throwing out the n-word left and right. That's not what that means. Racism sleeps. Racism waits. Racism is little things that you don't even know that you're doing until somebody tells you about it after the fact. If you could always see racism from space, then we, and by we I mean white people and only white people, wouldn't have been so shocked over the last few years to discover that so many of our loved ones are big ol' racist bags of shit. Because one, racism is subtle, it sneaks up on you, it manifests in tiny ways, and two, we never had to interrogate those behaviors because we were insulated by racism. Listen, bigotries of all kinds often manifest unconsciously, by accident, and the only way we can catch it, the only way we can be vigilant, is to rely on other people to let us know and then to build our experience around that knowledge. If you can just get comfortable with the fact that prejudice is an inherent part of the human experience, then getting feedback about it will involve a lot fewer tears and heartbreak. In conclusion, my fellow Snow Americans, to be good is to accept your limitations and be okay with being wrong. Now that we've heard this palm color lady's perspective, you know, it's like that moment when you have to sit down with a friend and have that awkward friend chat because they've been acting all kinds of wrong without even realizing it. You lay it all out and suddenly they are wide open like, oh, I had no clue. Now, imagine that scenario, but on a societal level, we're talking about white folks and the whole unlearning gig. It's a bit like waking someone up from a deep sleep and handing them a mirror to show them their own blind spots. But here's the thing, most white folks might not even realize that they are snoozing on this issue. But why? Well, it's like they've been sleepwalking through a minefield of racial insensitivity without even knowing it. And you see, the funny thing is that this issue does not come to mind for most white folks. 
Maybe it's simply because they do not think that it hurts black people the way they treat them or the way they treat us. Or maybe it's just because of ignorance. You know, sometimes people can be ignorant towards something and refuse to wake up and realize that, oh, what I've been doing is actually wrong and it's been offending people from all different kinds of levels, you know. And that is why there's need for advocating. There's need for coming on platforms like YouTube, like on social media platforms, utilizing them. People with the knowledge, people that have studied the history, we need to go out there. We need to bring out that information and then put it out there. This is the age of social media. This is the age of Aquarius, the age where knowledge will expand. You know, when people come across informative content, they always pause and try to listen. They'll see themselves in the information that has been presented before them simply because humans are designed in a way that whatever has been presented in front of us, we like to see ourselves in that it's sort of like a mirror you know so in that essence awareness is key we gotta shine the spotlight on those blind spots and have those uncomfortable conversations it's the only way we're gonna start breaking down those walls and building bridges instead for awareness is the first step towards redemption it's time to break the cycle to hold ourselves and our communities accountable for the sins of the past and the present only then can we pave the way for our future where equality reigns supreme. So let's rise to the occasion, armed with knowledge and empathy, ready to challenge the status quo and rewrite the narrative. We can be the catalyst for change that generations to come will thank us for. Let's dig a little deeper into the tangled web of unawareness and its chilling consequences. Now, the problem with ignorance is that it has a way of multiplying the problem. It's like trying to take out a fire with gasoline, if you know what I'm talking about, right? And as the black community grows in strength in numbers, so too does the shadow of discrimination looming over them. But here's the thing. The root cause may lie in the blind spots of white individuals passed down from generation to generation. You know, it's like a toxic hair loom and the thing is that we're living in a world where discussions on race are swept under the rug where the uncomfortable truths are conveniently ignored it's a breeding ground for chaos where the urgent need for education falls on deaf ears and yet here we are grappling with the ghosts of our past haunted by the echoes of injustice that reverberate through the ages it's the bitter irony of a society that refuses to confront its own demons. You know, it's like what usually happens with our African parents when they tell you after observing the way you treat your friends. You know, sometimes they'll tell you the way you treat your friends is not good. But since you don't listen, life itself is going to come back and bite you because of the things that you're being ignorant about right now. And you'll find that after growing up, we usually realize that our parents or those elderly people we are right in the past. And this is the thing that we see when it comes to racial injustices. Simply because palm coloreds don't want to listen and they don't want to learn. But it is in instances like this palm color lady coming out and trying to re-educate her community simply because she's experienced how us black people react to it. We avoid such people. Sometimes we don't create deep relationships with them and it might bother them. They might find themselves asking questions and wondering why they can't build deeper connections or relationships with black folks. All right. And maybe it is in that moment that this lady began to realize and saw where the problem was coming from. As we reach this new point in existence, it's time to acknowledge and celebrate those who courageously embrace the truth. For in their willingness to confront uncomfortable realities lies the promise of a brighter, more enlightened future. Humanity stands on the brink of a profound awakening where knowledge is flourishing like never before. But this awakening can only occur if we have the courage to open our hearts and minds to the truth. There is a palpable sense of urgency in the air, a recognition that the earth is shifting, and as it shifts, so too must we, aligning ourselves with the principles of justice, wisdom, and compassion. Now, with that being said, we would like to hear from you, our viewers. If you found today's discussion enlightening and thought-provoking, please like, share, and leave us your thoughts in the comment section and if you enjoyed the breakdown please ring the notification bell by subscribing to our channel not only do you help us in producing the content that we love but you also help us spreading messages of awareness with that being said it's 
Bon voyage from my end and I'll see you in the next video.